Hey kids, it's time to get some SML podcast all up in that. Predator is just staring at my monitor, like an inch away from it, just staring. I think she's falling asleep. <clears throat> just sitting, wow. staring at the monitor. She's tilting. She's tilting. Uh, what's up, everyone? This is Joe. This is the SML Podcast, episode number 210. So many numbers. So many. It feels like just yesterday I was recording episode 211. What? <laughs> <laughs> Are you a time traveler? Yes, you'll find out in a couple days. <laughs> oh, okay. That, make, that makes sense. So, joining me as usual, Chris is here. Chris, how you doing? fucking busy dude <laughs> like i i barely have time to fucking shit anymore it's ridiculous um i can't wait until uh can't wait until the beginning of september i'll at least gain one of my days back a week so that'll be nice you should really look into scheduling time to shit that's that's a good thing to do well most of the time i just try and like force it as soon as i wake up because i don't have time any other you know, moments you, of the You don't day. even go in the bathroom. You just, like, get up, get out of bed, no, I just, squeeze one out, and run. I, I run right to the garbage can, and I just <laughs> fucking... <laughs> yeah. Man, why, bathroom! Why, bathroom! Why, yeah, exactly. Why why cut out the middleman when I could just fucking... I could just take care of it now. <laughs> That's fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah, I what I should do is I should just install a drain, like, in my room somewhere, so just I could just... get a bedpan. A shatter? <laughs> yes, you need a shatter. <laughs> <laughs> Bringing it back. <laughs> Throw throwback. <laughs> that's that's for Zach, who's been listening this long. I yeah, I was gonna say, <laughs> is anybody else gonna get that joke? I don't know. <laughs> I don't. I really don't know. I barely got it for a second. I had to think. It's a slow burn. That's yeah. all. It, it clicked it, it, after, it's like, chef, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> I remember that. What was that, when uh, Smash Brothers 3DS came out? Is that when that was? I don't remember. I don't know. My mind's shot. It's, My everything it's, is shot. That Well, you know, that happens too. It's like two in the afternoon, and I just want to sleep for another four hours. Dude, right? I, I, I only slept for like four hours. I'm I'm dragging ass right now. Dragon ass. Mm-hmm. And not like dragon as in mythical creature ass. Rawr. Dragon yeah. ass. Ra <laughs> Ra Ra like a dungeon dragon. Not like that. Uh I am I am figuratively pulling myself through today. Nice. And dragging dragging myself a a across the floor to get there. Well, since you mentioned dragons, that's a, a good segue into some news for the week. I'm ready. Uh, there's a brand new game added to the Xbox One backward compatibility lineup. Uh, do tell. Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon. Oh, shit. Yeah, that's cool, actually. Sadly, it's the only edition, but it's a good one. It is a good one. It is a good one. I was hoping to add uh, more to that list, but... Oh, well, just one, but it's a good just one. one. Oh, that's weird. That's interesting, though. Yep, that's the only one for the week so far. It's only Wednesday or Friday oh, when you're true. listening to this. So oops, whatever. <laughs> Watch tomorrow. They're going to release like 20 games. Yeah, right. They'll just be like, yeah, you only get one game this, this time. And then by <laughs> come come Friday, be like, JK, here's like 30. <laughs> But uh, that's not the only addition to a service this week. EA, oh. EA Access oh, just I added another game to the vault. Mm-hmm. SSX for the 360. Yeah, that's actually pretty That's pretty dope. I'm not going to lie. If I didn't already have it, I'd be thrilled. Well, I don't. But <laughs> I have it. And I'm still excited because SSX is awesome. It is. 
It is. I'm excited. Like I, I, I watched a, a couple people play it when it came out. Um, and it was just one of those things where I'm fairly confident there was just a bunch of other shit that was going on at the same time. So it just kind of like fell off the radar for me. Uh, it's, uh, it's not as crazy as the older games, but it's still fun and it's still really good. But it's, it's not the super crazy over the top like SSX tricky. It's more, I don't want to say reality based because it still gets crazy, but like the whole thing takes place on one giant mountain. Oh, just one place. I think it has like two or three different peaks that you could go to, but you basically, you go downhill and you'll come to events interspersed here and there. As you go. Yeah. That's kind of cool. It's it's cool though. It's it's definitely a fun game. I don't think it got nearly the attention it deserved because it it probably just came out at a shitty time. I'm sure. Yeah, but, I'm trying to remember <clears throat> like what else was going like what else came out at that time. But I I, I have a feeling there was something. Um, there it was something relatively big. Yeah, uh, that was multiple years ago, and I barely remember yesterday. Yeah, exactly. Our, our memory <laughs> shot. Google is our best friend. Indeed. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure it's everybody's best friend at this point, right? It really is, because we're... Nobody, nobody tries to remember anything. They just fucking Google it. Remembering is overrated. Why, why do it yourself when you can have a computer do it for you? Indeed. That's why I use <laughs> notes for this show anymore, just for news. Yeah, because the computer could do it for you. Because just... I can't remember that shit. Yeah, fuck no. Like, do you think I could really remember... Let's see, what's my next bit here? Uh, Transformers Fall of Cybertron got re-released on Xbox One and PS4 this week for forty nine ninety nine. Why? Why? Because? <laughs> even, like, even better is the fact that it's forty nine ninety nine <sighs> For one single game. I, I'm confused. Yeah. Did they remaster it? It's Activision, so it got the Activision remaster treatment, which means they upped the in-game textures to 1080, and that's about it. And that's it. That's dumb. That's really dumb. Yeah. Like, maybe if it was a bundle with War for Cybertron as well for 50 bucks. Yeah, I could see that, maybe. like, like Even he- then, you figure what? Like, in a couple months, it's going to drop down to, like, fucking... Twenty, <laughs> maybe. Like if 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 it were twenty, I would jump on it. But for fifty bucks, I like, no, ev- no, not worth it. Like later on uh, this weekend, I'll be reviewing Marvel Ultimate Alliance one. And oh yeah, that's right. That's just one of those issues where, like, forty bucks for the Marvel Ultimate Alliance games, I can almost stomach the forty dollar price tag because well, because you can't even get like a original copy of it now for less than like fucking what thirty. Well, on Xbox three hundred and sixty, you could get the original Marvel Ultimate Alliance for dirt cheap because that was sold in that double pack with Forza. It's the the gold edition that had the DLC. Uh huh. That's the well, hard and, one. To and get. these remastered, yeah, and these remastered ones have the DLC, or the DLC is coming out later. Yeah. Yeah. The the DLC is included in the second game, but not the first one. But because of the the backlash on not including it, it's coming for free, thankfully. But uh, yeah. It even the two pack for sixty makes it a little easier to swallow because it's only thirty bucks a yeah, game. Yeah, it's thirty a piece. Yeah, and you're going to spend thirty on the game no matter what platform you get, especially for Ultimate Alliance two. And not to mention the fact that like at least Ultimate Alliance and Ultimate Alliance two, like the games were good enough that I could I could stomach that type of price tag. Yeah, but fifty bucks for a single Transformers game is just. Come on, Activision, knock it the fuck off. <laughs> yeah, that's that's but on the on the complete opposite side of the spectrum, the Dead Rising Triple Pack is now available to pre order, uh releasing September thirteenth for forty nine ninety nine. Okay. For Dead Rising, Dead Rising Two Dead Rising Two and, and Dead Rising the- Two off the record. For forty nine ninety nine. That's awesome. 
Yeah, normally the titles will be 20 bucks each, but the pre-order has the, the $50 special price tag, which is good. Mm-hmm. All three titles will be 1080p, 60 frames per second, include include all previous DLC costumes Ooh. for 20 bucks each. See, I can I can handle remasters coming out at 20 bucks. Like the Resident Evil titles, they're being re-released at 20 bucks. I could deal with that. Oh, yeah, sure. Because it's 20 never- bucks. Yeah, and if you never got the original version, you want to play it on the new one, like at least like, you know, 20 bucks is is reasonable for a game that was released however fucking long ago. Yeah, but Activision, they they need to cut this shit out. 60 bucks for two prototype games was rough. 60 bucks for two Marvel Ultimate Alliance games was rough, but a little more understandable because of all the licensing. 50 yeah. bucks for a single Transformers game is bleh. That's 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 dog shit. <laughs> they need they need to stop it. Fifty yeah. bucks for three Dead Rising games. I'm fucking there. <laughs> oh yeah, dude, all day every day. I still never technically finished two because the my game was bugged out. Nice. So I mean, I would consider, and I never played off the record. So oh, there you go. Fifty bucks, you could get all three. And uh, surprisingly. And I didn't realize this was happening, but Dead Rising and Dead Rising 2 are both getting physical releases for 20 bucks. Uh, oh, yeah. that's weird. On P- Actually, PS4 and Xbox One, Dead Rising comes out the 13th. Dead Rising 2 physical is going to hit on the 27th, so two okay. weeks after release. But yeah, if, if you're a physical collector, there you go. You could get two of the three on disc for 20 bucks a pop. That's pretty interesting. Yeah. See, so, I would, I would, I would absolutely pick those. If you haven't played those games before, um, I would absolutely hundred percent recommend those. They're yeah. a good time. They're a Speaking lot of, fun. of physical editions of games, I saw your unboxing video. Oh, did you? Yes. For my No Man's Sky. Make, no Man's Sky and uh, Ollie, Ollie. 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 Yeah. yeah. Well. We'll we'll get to that in a in a few minutes because yeah, no I figured Man's, we should probably talk about No Man's Sky. A no little Man's bit Sky and... has been getting a little bit of a backlash, but there there's actually another game that's coming to retail uh, for PC for okay. Steam in particular. Quantum Break. Oh, I know. Yeah, I just got the email this morning that Quantum Break is hitting retail for Steam from Nordic Games. And of course, Microsoft and Remedy. Uh, it's going to be a a timeless, quote unquote, timeless collector's edition for only forty bucks. Wow. So I'm kind of tempted to double dip because it has premium packaging. I wish they had a a picture of the packaging because I'm curious to see what it looks like. But all the press assets were just like logos of the game and yeah, uh, five game discs because it's huge. And well, it probably has all the the. The TV show stuff. Possibly. Either that or I know it's like a a 50 gig game, so it might just be on DVDs instead of a Blu-ray. Could be. Yeah, I could see that. But five game discs with a one-time Steam key validation required, so it is Steam, a making of Blu-ray, a making of book where an art book meets a making of, as they say in the email, a soundtrack CD, two posters and a quick start guide for 40 bucks that's not bad man that's a hell of a package for only 40 bucks well i'll i'll be the dumbass and say that uh i actually technically own that game and never even launched it nice uh i i actually have it on windows 10 because i know somebody else that picked it up and they didn't oh, upgrade they... to windows 10 and they didn't they weren't interested in it so like yeah you could just have it nice like, all right yeah fine <laughs> like, well now now you can get a steam version if you don't want to deal with windows 10 uh version to to, to me it's not going to be any different so but for the audience yeah sure sure yeah I mean, I, I love how Nordic has been teaming up to release these special collector's editions of games. Uh, they did it with Ori and the Blind Forest, which I picked up that collector's edition mm-hmm. because that was only, I think, 20 bucks. Steelbook, soundtrack, all that fun jazz. For 20 uh, bucks? Yeah. It might have been 30. 
damn. But even still, like, it's very rare to see steel books offered at anything lower than sixty. Yeah. Uh, they're doing it with State of Decay Year One Survival Edition, and now they're doing it with Quantum Break. It's like it's a cool partnership between Nordic and Microsoft, and I hope they continue it. It's cool to see. I wouldn't be surprised if they if they did just because like i mean look at what they did with quantum break when it initially released you got a f- an extra free copy of the game yeah like that's that's ridiculous yeah good stuff good stuff what other news do you have uh let me see here let me check my my notes here uh speaking I actually, of I, go ahead I, just to, just to let you know i do have something that i want to have like a, a small like little bit about um, but we can do that after you're done with all the rest of the news because it's not really news. So it, it's just like uh, a little physical edition. Apparently, GameStop has a physical edition of the game Abzu listed, which we reviewed last week, mm-hmm. November eighth for the PlayStation Four. Okay, and an Xbox One listing. And that's not currently on Xbox One. It's only There's- PC and. We we PS4, were right? I inquired about it and I was told that there were no plans for an Xbox One version that they could I I guess no announced plans so I think GameStop might have spilled the beans that Abzu's coming to Xbox One which I'll be well, excited about because I love that game. <laughs> I mean I don't know we'll see. GameStop's normally on top of their shit when it comes to like adding in um like new listings for items and stuff like that. For, for shit they're going to sell, they're usually on right. top of the game. So, and it's in November, so there could be like a like a yeah, maybe a, a 3 month exclusive window that that uh 505 can't talk about, but GameStop is just like, "Oops. Fuck it, we're not the developers, so you don't get mad at us." <laughs> Pretty much. But but since we're talking about GameStop. all this shit that you could get in stores, and Nintendo, we have some Nintendo news. I'm excited. Shut up, they exist? Yeah, believe it or not. Their Nintendo <laughs> Selects line, like their budget titles, they just added a ton of new games. Oh, cool. Available for 20 bucks each. On the 3DS, you can get Nintendo Dogs and Cats. <laughs> boy, which boy. Lego City Undercover, The Chase Begins. Tomodachi Life, Animal Crossing, New Leaf, and Luigi's Yo. Mansion, Dark Moon. Oh, Animal Crossing for twenty bucks is solid. And Luigi's Mansion. I never played. I well, you're gonna hate me. I never played Luigi's Mansion. I've watched people speed run it. That's cause, <laughs> that's because you a bitch. But uh, we use I didn't, not I didn't left have out. A GameCube. We use not left out. They're getting a handful of budget titles as well. Nintendo Land, which big fucking deal. Yeah, whatever. Uh, the Legend of Zelda: Wind Waker HD. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Take and the Le- Lego City Undercover. Can you believe that was, that, was game s- too. that was still a full price game? Uh, actually, I could. And it was worth it. was it. a good fucking game, yeah. That was a really good game. And if you don't own a, a 3DS, they they are releasing another Nintendo 3D new Nintendo 3DS bundle, not the XL. Okay. It's the smaller one. Exclusively. Oh, wait, so, so is this like it's the one with the C stick and all that stuff, but it's a smaller version? Yeah, it's the one with the swappable like cover plates uh, okay i'm interested uh the, they haven't sold it by itself in america they've only done like bundles before i bundles. think the one was for the that one animal crossing game like the oh, happy like home the, designer the Mar- yeah the almost mario party-esque whatever fucking thing they had that they released that wasn't another animal crossing like true animal crossing game and i got pissed <laughs> the ha- that's all happy i really want designer the one where you're just designing houses yeah, fuck that shit. <laughs> well, now they're going to have a new bundle. Catch bugs and shit. A new bundle available only at Walmart and Target on August 26th. And it's only going to be 149 The last bundle was 200 So this is the it, cheapest oh. that you could get the bundle. With Mario 3D Land installed, and it's going to have two separate cover plate sets. One is a Mario-themed one, which kind of looks like shit. Because it's just a picture of Mario split across the two plates. Uh, yeah. The other is retro themed with like eight bit pixel art of Mario and Zelda and all. Oh, that's cool. Retro stuff. It looks I wanna, good. I, I want to try and find a picture of that now. You should look it up. Mm-hmm. I'm working on it. And then a little bit more of Nintendo retail news is they are putting out some new amiibo in game bundles. 
they are going to sell Yoshi's Woolly World available with either the blue yarn Yoshi or the pink yarn Yoshi. Oh, cool. Mario Party 10 with a Peach Amiibo and a Bowser Amiibo. And Captain's oh, Toad, okay. Captain Toad's Treasure Tracker with a Toad Amiibo, finally. And they're all going to be 40 bucks they, each. They didn't do that initially? Nope. Sold them separately. That's dumb. Yeah. <laughs> but then they, they were able to charge 40 bucks for the game and 13 bucks for the Amiibo. Hmm. Now you could get them together for 40 that's not bad. Yeah. Oh, okay, I saw the... Pl- I'm looking at the plates now. But it's not all good oh, news oh, for Nintendo. Oh, that plate is really fucking cool. I told you. The Mario one looks like shit, though. Yeah, I don't like that one. But that... Yeah, I like the I like the pixel arty one. That one's the sweet. The yellow pixel one. That yeah. one looks cool. Yeah, I, I dig it. And the AC... Well, oh, fuck. I, I don't have an AC adapter anymore. Those are cheap. Whatever. Eh... <laughs> I may I I should probably look into maybe um, how much GameStop sells like a used new 3DS XL or something. Maybe there I want to replace mine really bad. Still, I still never did it. Do it up, do it up. But a buck fifty for the new one. That's <laughs> and that fa- that faceplate is pretty sweet. I just don't know if I would want the smaller one. Now some people like the small ones. It's not all about well, size. Of course it is. We're in America. That's some bitches. <laughs> it's always about size. But always. sadly, it's not all good news in Nintendo land. Oh, uh, what'd they fuck up this time? Well, it's not that they fucked up anything per se. They're just getting a lot of backlash because in the past week, a gigantic archive of every issue of Nintendo Power was put online. Uh which Nintendo had taken down, protecting their IP. And then Uh a Metroid 2 fan remake was released Uh online, and Nintendo had it, you know, they shut it down, protecting their IP. And a lot of people are pissed off that these happened, but you got to look at it on the bright side. Nintendo needs to protect their IP. They need to shut these things down. Uh Uh-huh. I agree. They could have shut it down before they released. But Nintendo waited until they were released and put out there. I think Nintendo knows that once something is put on the internet, it's never contained. Ever. So they it released, they waited a day, they shut it down. People are like, oh man, no, I'll never get to play it. And everyone's like, Man, I got a link for you here. I was going to say, it's the fucking internet. Like, <laughs> it never goes away. Like, that that Metroid fan remake will be out there forever. Nintendo's yeah. never going to contain it, and I think they know that. They waited until it, re- it was released, and then... Do you really think that... It, I, see, I, I can't... I don't know if I agree on that, though. Why? I would say, if anything, maybe, maybe they waited until it was actually officially released so that they would have more, like, better legal like they could take a better legal course of action towards it no because they could always issue a cease and desist like stop your development you do not own the ip and they did they let it happen they let it release and then they're like all right it released for a day take it down i think they i think that's what they their mindset was like they they couldn't just endorse it because I'm I'm sure that would there would be a lot of legal paperwork to like officially endorse something and show yeah. that they're not like it's not that they're not defending their trademark they're just embracing this happening they it's just easier to say no you got to take that down but yeah. it already released so there's no way it could be contained it's just, it's so weird I I think that's their mindset of like we have to show that we're defending our trademark, but we'll at least let you guys sneak it out there unofficially. Yeah, right. That's my thoughts. Well, I mean, I could, I could see, 
I could see the arguments for a bunch of different reasonings. Who who knows? It's fucking Nintendo. They like honestly, Nintendo has such a weird way of going about stuff that I wouldn't be surprised that any possible explanation that somebody could come up with, if they were to actually release a press release saying like, "Oh, well, this is why we actually do did it," it would be something completely unrelated that we would just be like, "Wait, what?" Like, <laughs> true. They, they, like they could just be like, "Well, we decided to wait a day because um uh." It's 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 bad luck to uh to t- 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 sue somebody on the t- 12th full moon of <laughs> the lunar cycle so we just waited an extra I day. I can't tell if that's racist or not. How? <laughs> like I just feel like their mentality when it comes to like what their business decisions are just totally fucking whacked. Like, <laughs> then again, with Nintendo's thoughts on the internet, maybe they really think if they send a DMCA takedown notice that it's officially like no it's one officially gone, it's forever. gone forever. Like no one, even the people who have it downloaded, it just disappears. I don't. I don't think they're that dumb. You, <laughs> you never know with Nintendo. No one uh, ever knows. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Who no knows? one ever knows. Who fucking knows? Maybe that Nintendo NX just means like, you know, ne- next time you expect us to make a good decision, we're not going to do it. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> Whatever. I I have I have hopes. I have high hopes for the NX. Hopefully, is that like? Did that? get any sort of release windows or anything yet? Do nope. we know anything about nope. it? I th- Nothing? I think just still fucking just in the dark? Supposedly by like March, but I don't know. <laughs> Nintendo Dude, hasn't like, really said shit about it. I swear to God, if Nintendo just like comes out like around Christmas time and they're just like, oh, by the way, here's the NX. Let's, let's they, like, they might pull a Saturn bye. and just be like, oh, to- we're going to announce the, the NX today. Um, by the way, it's available it's out. in stores right now. Dude, that'd be retarded. Oh my god. I backfired when Sega did it. Yeah, but it, do you think like I don't know. I think Nintendo's got enough pool and enough of a uh uh enough of a fan base that they if anybody could potentially pull it off, I feel like Nintendo could be the one. True. A lot Look, of the backlash with the Saturn was that third party developers were kept in the dark about it, so they did they weren't even like working on games at the time. But Nintendo doesn't give a fuck about third parties to begin I, with. I was just gonna say, yeah. So like they could just be like, eh, fuck it, let's just do it. Like, the next is out now with Smash Brothers. There Here's you go. my Shut money. The fuck up. <laughs> Yeah, Merry yeah. Christmas. everybody everybody would be like, all right, I guess I'm going to GameStop tomorrow. Like, <laughs> and it has two additional characters. <laughs> like, Fuck. They wouldn't even think twice about it. They'd just be like, okay, this is this is what has to happen. This like, is my <laughs> life now. It launches so, I don't it know. launches we'll with see. with uh Smash Brothers and Mario Kart 8, just NX ports of them. And it's just a know, port. All DLC included. You know people would, uh, would lose their fucking minds. Your connection just went to butt. I don't know if that's on my end or your end. I don't know. I, you sounded fine over here, so. It's probably on my end. Maybe. Good times. Well, maybe I, w- I won't Maybe I won't have that issue when I go hardwired. Maybe. Which will be later today, because Amazon shipping my long-ass fucking Ethernet cord, and it should be here today. Nice. Yeah, Amazon was here yesterday at like 11 o'clock. Dropping off my my No Man's Sky and Ali Ali, and my uh my my WWE Attitude Era Volume Three Blu-ray. I'm sure that's great. I'm I was amazed because it comes with like a little mini book showing like some of their the best matches of the Attitude Era, and Chris Benoit is mentioned in there. Like him versus Chris Jericho gets a two page spread in the little booklet. I was like, "Wow, really? They're they're actually acknowledging Chris Benoit." That's very weird. Yeah, but yeah, No Man's Sky. I have not dug into it yet. I I installed it, and then I had to play a bunch of other shit. So <laughs> I have not played it myself yet. Uh, but th- I believe the No Man's Sky shitstorm is officially real. Uh, so what what do you mean by that? Why don't we talk about No Man's Sky for a little bit then? First off, 
I didn't know about this until like late last week that No Man's Sky is a survival game. You didn't know that? No. What do you, I mean, eat duh. Like, <laughs> I, I knew it was, as, I thought it was like a more focused on space exploration and going planet to planet. Well, yeah, I, sure. I didn't know it was like maintaining resources and continually monitoring your power suit and your energy levels and this and that. I, I didn't, I didn't know it was a hardcore survival game. See, and that's actually why I'm sl- slightly interested in it. Like, I've been watching some uh, Twitch streamers and, and seeing if this was something... Like, this is one of the games that was on my radar, but not. I wasn't so adamant about checking it out until, like, this was going to be one that I waited a little bit on. Yeah. But with how much I've seen on it and how fun it looks... Eh, like, what? The PC version is supposed to come out in, like, a month? The, no, the 12th. Tw- All right, so like so what, two later days? this week, or so, uh, now I, when you're listening to this, truth. I'm I'm I might just pull the trigger and pick it up for myself. Um, it's I I feel like just the technological side of of things and just how they were able to produce this game from a development standpoint. I feel like this is pretty monumental. Um, so I, I I'm. I don't know. I, I I feel like this is just one of those games where if I don't take the time to play it, I'll feel really stupid down the road. <laughs> Maybe. But then uh, the other thing, like people were losing their goddamn minds about this <clears throat> for months and months and months. Sean Murray, the, the creator of the game, has been uh-huh. saying in interviews and everything else that, you know, despite the fact that it's a gigantic, gigantic universe... If you were somehow able to be on in the same place at the same time as someone else, you would see each other. You could interact with other players. I don't I don't feel like like that was advertised. He talked about it countless times in interviews like Reddit has been exploding with this, like chopping up interviews that he did where people were explicitly asking, can you interact with other players in the game? And he confirmed multiple times, yes, 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 yes. First day the game is out, two players were on the same planet at the same time, in the same area, streaming on Twitch, both of them, and they were not there in each other's game. Well, I can't say that I'm surprised. Like, I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't getting the game with those intentions in mind. I don't really give a shit if I bump into anybody else. I feel like this is just one of those types of games that it is meant for you to just kind of get lost in. Um, I was thinking it more of like, you're the last person in the, the universe. And you're just set out to survive and explore. So that's that's what I was kind of going into it with the mentality of. Now, there, there's plenty like, of people out there who were pissed at the fact that this was a, a something that was touted for months. That if you ran into other people, you could see them, interact with them, explore with them. And first day, first day, eight, eight what quintillion planets or something like that yeah first day the game is out two players are on the same planet and they couldn't meet each other well who's to say that maybe it's just a bug maybe it's something maybe it's something that can get you know put into the game later on down the road like I mean, there, there's a million and a half different reasons why it wasn't working but this is the internet they need to bitch about it. Yeah, I don't fucking care. <laughs> like I just, I, I, I want to focus on the game in its current state. Yeah, you know what I mean. I'm having more so fun if, looking so if that's at like not there, the the weird ahead. creatures that people are running into, or someone was on a planet where all the plants just look like dicks, like legitimately, uh, the plants look like dicks, and someone posted a picture. He's like. 
well, you're the dicks, I've got the balls, and he shared a picture of a plant that looked like just hanging ball sacks. That's hilarious. Like, just in the game. So this isn't well, yeah, shit but it's people all procedurally, are making. Yeah. But it's just procedurally generated. So. Procedurally generated dicks and balls for plants. Well, it's a shape. Yeah. So... So I'm These things I am, happen. I'm definitely eager to dig into the game when I have the fucking time. <laughs> well, uh, those these things I'm sorry. I was fucking yawning mid thought. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? It's horrible. Um, maybe uh maybe you'll have some more time soon. We'll um maybe we'll ease up on some sort of reviews and and Get to yeah, some we, AAA stuff. I really and, don't have like next week isn't nearly as bad as this week it was with fucking fifteen games this week. Yeah, dude, that's oh my god. Across two episodes. <laughs> so many. Next it's week too much it's just like it's just so much. Next, so much stuff. <laughs> as of right now, next week I have five, and one of them is Marvel Ultimate Alliance 2. See, like that's I feel like I feel like five is reasonable. I'd say even like four. Because then that way you're putting like a decent amount of time into it, but you're not burning yourself out on them. Hey, I just, you know I, mean? I cover what comes along, but. Well, if, if sure. I have the opportunity to work with developers and expand the show's brand in whatever tiny way I can, fuck it. <laughs> no, I, I understand the mentality, but it's just like, that's a, so much stuff. <laughs> So I know stuff. The only victim here is my throat and all the talking I have to do. And your your poor poor computer. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, what did you want to talk about? You said that you had something you wanted to Yeah, so um so I went to my local uh I went to my local GameStop because uh I realized that I currently only own one X Box one controller so in the off chance that i were to ever invite somebody over or if i had a friend just you know that wanted to play a game with me i can't because i only have one <laughs> so uh so i was like you know what like i'm gonna go and look and see like what prices are on controllers maybe i'll look at like a, a cheaper alternative that i could just use as like a backup just in case and um and I found this controller. Now, I've had one of their older ones in the past um, for the 360. And uh, this is a, a PDP Afterglow. Um, but the thing that's really interesting about this particular one um, is think of it like now, I obviously, I have an Elite controller. So yeah. I got kind of, I got kind of um, really particular about the feel of of the controllers like just like what they you know how they react and just what how how their build quality is and everything like that yeah and i love the functionality of the extra buttons in the in the in the back um so this controller there's these two little under underneath um there's these two little wheels kind of um it they 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 kind of only shift to one side and then you can press them in. So there's technically each wheel has three different buttons that you can program it to. Interesting. Um, yeah. And, and the thing that's really interesting about it is you can program it in the controller itself. Like you don't have to use a program. So basically there's a, there's a button underneath. You hit the middle button. It go, like there's three different functionalities. Um, one, obviously because it's an afterglow, uh, there's lights that that are like all throughout it. The, the the controller itself looks fucking awesome. Uh, it's clear, so you can see all the circuitry in it, which I always I always love that stuff. Yeah. Um, but uh, it is completely. It's called the prismatic one, I think. Or let me grab the box quick. Um. So yeah, it's the the afterglow prismatic controller. Um. So the the color scheme is literally whatever the fuck you want. Um, you can change the colors by you hit that program, the program button on the, on the underside. Uh, and you use the left thumbstick. Once you're in that mode, uh, you use the left thumbstick to control the brightness. And then you use the right thumbstick 
to change like the hue, the color. Um, and then you just hit it again to lock it into place. So it's very, very easy to customize. It's very, very easy to kind of like make it look however you want. Um, when you hit the button again, that programmable button, uh, to the second mode, uh, that's what you use to program those little wheels underneath. So all you end up doing is, is you, you press the wheel in the direction that you want it to register. And then there's an LED that flashes in the center. And then you just hit whatever button you want to map to it. So it doesn't matter, like, it doesn't matter if you're in game. It doesn't matter if you're on PC. It doesn't matter if you're on Xbox One. Cause that was the other reason why I wanted to get it. I wanted, like, because of how bad the stick drift has gotten on my Elite, I was considering just not fucking using it yeah. <laughs> for a while. <laughs> um, and this thing just feels, it feels fucking solid. Like it just, it feels really, really good. I love the extra functionality of, of the, um, of the wheels underneath. Uh, the third functionality of it is when it rumbles, there's like extra LEDs that turn on. Oh, nice. So, so it, there's like these little red LEDs that will pop up. That's kind of <laughs> neat. So like, so like, let's say you're playing a first person shooter or something like that. And then you get hit because the rumble triggers your controller will flash red. <laughs> so it's like just so like little stuff like that right this thing right brand new 50 bucks yeah i'm looking at it on the website and it it has fantastic reviews on the website too yeah it's there's a there's a jack underneath so you could still it still has the the 3.5 millimeter port and then the other thing that's really cool about it too is the d-pad when you hit that other programmable button it has the stuff on the d-pad to adjust the volume and uh, controls of everything for the f- millimeter jack. Nice. There's an extra. There's an extra button next to the right thumbstick. So you just hold. You press that in, and then you hit whatever you want on the D pad, and it's just like a quick dude. Like the functionality of this thing is fucking sweet. Like, um, it's wired. It is not wireless. Yeah, that's that. When looking at it, that's my only issue with it. The- like, I can't use a wired controller. But. If you're looking for something like like the way that I have my setup, I have my Xbox One hooked up to my computer monitor. Like like my consoles and everything like that is set up like everything's all in one spot. So I'm always sitting at my desk whenever I'm playing my Xbox One or my PC. So it's really easy for me to just kind of like, you know, leave a USB cord plugged in to, uh, to my Xbox and have one plugged into my PC. And then whichever one I want to use, I just plug the controller into it and I'm fucking done. Um, so for my particular setup, it's perfect. Yeah. It's awesome. Um, and uh, I believe there's an actual legitimate warranty that's offered with it nice. that PDP will support, uh, unlike the, what, 30 hours that you get with an Elite controller. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, I mean, like I just I, I, I went in there and I figured that I was probably going to end up like looking at a bunch of stuff, not being happy with it and end up getting one of those uh, custom ones off the Microsoft site. Yeah. But I ended up seeing this thing. They just had one on display that I was able to kind of like hold and mess around with a little bit. And I was just like, damn, the functionality on this thing is fucking awesome. Like, <laughs> nice, really, really good. Um, the triggers feel great. Um, the thumbsticks feel great. Like, it's just it's a fucking solid ass controller so and if you're looking for and it has the same design as an xbox one controller yep yep so i mean this this thing's fucking solid man this thing's really cool so this feels like uh, a review or an advertisement well well, so i i just honestly i was just so surprised by the the quality of it and how much i've been liking it so far i just wanted to bring it up up that that sponsorship money (laughs) yeah I'm sure they're not hearing this, but, uh, yeah, man, like it's just, yeah, I was, I was so surprised that I just really wanted to bring it up. So nice. Yeah. I know, uh, PDP has put out a handful of, uh, like they, I think they're the ones who did the fallout controller, the mirror's edge controller, and they all look great. I just, the wired aspect I can't really do. See, I don't mind the wired aspect and the wires pretty fucking long honestly and it's solid I just, like it's a it, i have cats that sprint oh yeah you'd be fucked like, <laughs> like you That's would be I said, fucked i can't do a wire <laughs> yeah yeah the only th- the only thing that i would actually consider doing if you were to pick something like this up is to use for your pc yeah um 
which that's the other thing that's great about it. Like, because I'm on Windows 10, it's literally you just plug it in and you're done. That's it. Like, you don't have to fucking, you don't have to mess around with drivers. You don't have to do any of that stupid bullshit. Like I said, the the functionality of those like little wheel things underneath for the extra buttons, that's all done on the controller itself. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about like downloading an extra side program or anything like that. Um, I, I can see how a lot of people could be initially confused with how much functionality is on this controller because there's a ton. Um, but if you just go through the, the uh, owner's manual for like five minutes, you figure it out. Yeah. So, well, yeah, are, man. Are you ready to dig into some reviews? I suppose so. Well, I'm going to let you kick things off. Uh, sure. With one of the emails I sent you, uh, Dreamal's Dream Quest, developed and published by Zynus, uh, released August 3rd on the Xbox One for 9.99. It Did released, we cover Dreamal's before? Yeah, it released previously on the PS4. So I I had one of our friends, CJ Greenwood, do a second opinion mini review on the game. Okay, that's what I was gonna I was gonna say. I'm like, wait a minute, I remember this one. Like, <laughs> yep. We we covered it back when the the PS4 version released, but it just came out on the Xbox One, and Zynus has been awesome with us, and uh, I wanted to make sure that we gave it some attention on the show. Well, okay then. Uh, well, let me start the, uh, what he has in this email. Uh, Dreamwell's Dream Quest is a 2D cartoon style puzzle platformer. Uh, I love the cartoon style. It's fun and vibrant and overall makes the game enjoyable to look at. The game is based around three animals who all were hurt in some way. And when they went to sleep, they found themselves in a play called Dreamland. As soon as they show up, they meet the white rabbit who crashed his ship while trying to escape the bad rabbits that have infested and ruined the experience of the other creatures of dreamland. The white rabbit asks you to help him get supplies that he needs to get his ship working again. And in return, he will heal them. Uh, he asks for four items, uh, which you collect in different areas. Uh, when you, when you enter an area, you meet the creatures who live there and they have what you need, but will only give it to you if you help them out. The bad rabbits did something to each of these creatures. For example, in the first stage, you meet a cat who had all of his fruit stolen by the bad rabbits and you get him more fruit so that he will trade the item that you need. Those fucking uh, rabbits. The gameplay is quite unique and interesting one of the animals is a fox who can only move right another is a deer who can only move left and a bird who can only jump however if you walk into one of those animals uh with another it combines them so if you combine a fox with a bird then you can move to the right and jump you can also combine all three animals so that you can move in both directions and jump uh you can even split them up after you have combined them if you need to uh, as you progress, the game throws more different obstacles at you, like uh, a mimic, which does everything that you do uh, and can actually use the mimic to press a button and stand on switches. Uh, although one thing that I have found annoying about the gameplay is that if you jump against a wall, it sometimes will either throw you backwards or simply not give you enough height. Uh, there seems to be an invisible ledge on walls that... Uh, that can be very frustrating if you have to restart a stage because a jump throws you back. Uh, initially, I was under the impression that this game would be great for kids. Uh, graphically and story-wise, it was very child-friendly. However, after the first two areas, your kid would have to be some sort of child prodigy to figure out some of these <laughs> stated stages. Uh, the game gets surprisingly complex and even had me searching for guides for some stages that I just could not figure out. Yes, I know that makes me a, a cheaty cheater. <laughs> <laughs> I did want to progress through it after uh, and after 15 minutes plus of trying to figure out uh, a 30 second stage and still not getting it, I needed to just move on. The game seems more directed at hardcore puzzle game fans who can multitask like a champ, something I am not good at. Uh, the soundtrack was fun to listen to, but was very limited. Uh, I didn't notice many different songs. It sounded like the same song for every stage, and the only time it was different was in a stage select mode. However, it wasn't a bad song, and it went well with the game. Uh, it wasn't too overbearing or distracting. The achievements 
are boring, but they make sense. Um, they're all basically beating stages and obtaining a certain amount of stars. The only hard thing is obtaining 490 stars, which is 10 less than the max. So you may find yourself grinding quite a few levels to get the best time possible for five stars on each stage if you want that achievement. Overall, it's a pretty fun game, and although frustrating at times, I really did like the cutesy graphics. I'd, uh, I'd say it's a try it for any puzzle fan looking for a challenge, and for ten bucks, it's totally worth it. Nice, yeah. I I enjoyed the series. I did mention when we covered that one that it it felt like a direct sequel to the first game, so they didn't really explain the mechanics or ease you in as much as the first game did. So it's I kind of wonder if it would have been better to bring the first game to the system as well, but. What can you do? Uh, who knows? But on top of who that, knows? we we have a couple of copies to give away, and we have two emails to read who are going to get copies of the game. Technically well, three, but Jordan said that he already won the game, so he doesn't need it anymore. So fuck him. Well, there you go. <laughs> uh, but Daniel writes, you know, I do do the usual thing to email us and tell us why you want the game. Daniel N. wrote us and said, I love animals, and I love it when I'm able to dream at night when I'm fast asleep. I want to help the animals find the lost treasures of Dreamland and save the world. And Daniel, you're going to be able to, because you're getting a copy of the game. Well, there you go. And then Nikki Baby, our SML winner, the, the mega winner, is writing in for this one and says, I would love to win this game because it looks so adorable and cute, which is a girly thing to say. Luckily, I'm a girl and could get away with it. Thanks for the chance. And guess what? She's going to play it, too. Well, there you go. And then Jordan wrote us, and he said, I'd love to win Dreamwell's Dream Quest because the gameplay seems so crazy that I can't even wrap my head around it from the trailers. Fusing animals together to move a new direction seems like something a disgruntled veterinarian would do. Also, major props for the game being from a Korean developer, since it's always great to see teams from around the world support ID at Xbox. Thanks for the chance, but he already won it previously on a different contest, so... Fuck you. So, fu- so fuck you. <laughs> fuck you. That's funny. So, yeah. Winners. Winner, winner, chicken dinners. Chicken dinners. Next game to talk about is called A Node. It is developed and published by Kitty Kitte Face Software. K-I-T-T-E-H. So, Kitte Face Software. Released August 10th for three ninety nine on Xbox One. This is a puzzle game that feels like a mix between uh, Columns and uh, Luminous. Okay. Where it's it's not rhythm-based, but it has the, the matching, like, lining up and matching colors and then detonating them that Luminous has. Okay. Uh, this, there's, instead of just two colors, it has a wide variety of colors. You have a three, usually a three block puzzle piece that drops down either straight line or curved. Uh, sometimes they have a fourth piece, which is kind of like a, a joiner piece. You have to link the colors up and have them touch. They could be, you know, adjacent or even diagonal works. Uh, the little joiner pieces, they have a, kind of a slant to them where if you line up two of them properly it's kind of like a pipe that connects the two and you don't need to be the same color there which can help you link together bigger chains you okay. dr- you drop a detonator piece you'll see though they're like a flashing one you touch that to one of the chains of three or more or two or more And they all explode, and then the other pieces could drop down if physics allow for it to do so. And you, uh, you go as far as you can. Okay. Cause, cause it's a puzzle game. The game is a fucking blast. I was, believe it or not, the first person in the world to get a thousand out of a thousand on the game. Oh. (laughs) Number one, baby. Number one. I, I told the developer that, and he's like, wow, I thought it would take someone a bit longer. I'm like, yeah, I'm just fucking awesome, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Great party game, has good local pl- local multiplayer mode, different power-ups to help you through the game, and they have a handful of extra power-ups in the, the multiplayer mode so that you have offensive and defensive power-ups. So you can, like, force the other person that they can't rotate their piece or they don't have a piece preview or stuff where it, like, eliminates the bottom line of yours or it eliminates half of a color of your pieces or it'll create a random uh, detonator piece. Just r- any random piece on your board could turn into one okay. and could just create crazy chains out of nowhere. The fact that this game is only 4 bucks only helps matters in that this was going to be a buy it regardless but at four dollars it's a must buy it (laughs) i mean it's 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 a fun puzzle game it is addictive it is a a cool twist on the color matching puzzle games and it's only four bucks yeah four bucks ain't bad every time that we we get a game that's cheap and we're like it's only eh. Yeah, I mean, come right. on, it's four fucking dollars. That's actually um, something that uh, I'm going to talk about uh, later about a game that I'm technically not going to review today, but I'll just give first impressions later. Yeah, um, that that also applies for that as well. So, so yeah, a node gets a buy it, buy that shit, cool. buy that a shiatzes. So next What's game. Next? Next game is called Inferno Climber, developed and published by Arc System Works. It released July 6th in the early access for $19.99. It's planned to be in early access for the next two or three months still, but that can always change based on feedback they're given. And uh, Uneaten Lake wrote up a, a mini review for this one. A mini, a very mini review. So I didn't even look at it. It's a taste. The tiny little taste. An early access preview. Okay. Yes. Um, so, Infernal Climber is an action RPG for uh, from Arc System Works that is in the early access phase uh, on Steam for twenty bucks, basically. Um, I saw that people were giving this game a nod towards Zelda and Dark Souls, but for some reason, I kept getting the feeling of playing Cameo from the early Xbox 360 days. Um, not sure if it's because of the size of the character or the graphics, though. Um, the game felt a little off when play- first playing because the B button was uh, being used for selecting menu items and the A button was being used for cancel actions. Thankfully, there's a setting where you can change and swap these buttons around. Um, inside the settings, it says that Japanese players use the B button for OK and the A button for cancel, whereas the Western world has them swapped. Yeah. Um. The game isn't bad, but there's a lot of polish that's missing from this early access game. From what there is available now, um, I would give it a try at rating if you enjoy platforming adventure games. So, I mean, there's really, that's all, that's all he's got here. So there's really not a ton of info. Um, but, uh, it's still in, it's in, it's going to be, like you said, it's going to be in early access for at least a few months. Um, so we we could always try revisiting this one. I would revi- down the yeah. Line. This would be one that we would. I would prefer to revisit stuff once it's fully um, once it's fully released because a lot of these um, um, a lot of these uh, early access games they're like completely different once they finally get released. So yeah, yeah. It's All just right. uh, the nature of the beast, I guess. I'll have to look into that one, and maybe we could revisit that one further down the line when there's more to it. But uh, next one, next game to talk about is called Happy Dungeons, developed and published by Toy Logic. It released August 3rd on Xbox One Game Preview for free. Ooh. Oh, snap. Uh, microtransactions are available for Happy Jewels for the in-game store that let you buy, like, item card packs or... You could buy, like, customization items for your character or, like, slot bonuses for items or minions, stuff like that. There is a Founders Pack available for $14.99 that includes 250 Happy Jewels at a discount, which normally would cost $19.99. So if if you are enjoying the game and want to get in early on things and save a couple of bucks on 
on a on a item pack or something, you could grab the founders pack for fifteen bucks, and we were provided with a handful of those. Okay. Uh, the game, if you are familiar with Happy Wars, which was the previous game from Toy Logic, that yeah, was a vaguely. like an eight on eight or twelve on twelve multiplayer, just hack and slash, beat the shit out of each other game. Tower defensey ish thing. Yeah. Like a hack and slash conquer sword, sword. thing. Uh, con- uh, yeah. If you haven't played it, just go check it out. Because I'm pretty sure there, that's still it's free, free right? To play. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just like Happy Dungeons, free to play, supported by microtransactions. My biggest gripe with Happy Wars was always trying to get a full game. Because okay. there, there were so many times that I would play the game and like I, there would be 10 people. And then it would be like looking for more players, looking for more players. And then people would give up and leave. And then after like 20 minutes, it would just boot you to the menu like we were unable to make a game. I I don't know if Toy Logic had issues with getting the online to work properly on the Xbox One. But Happy Dungeons takes all the gameplay of Happy Wars and turns it into a dungeon crawling hack and slash. Okay. So it removes the need for 20 other players, and you can solo this game if you want. Well, that makes me infinitely more interested. (laughs) Indeed. Indeed. I have tried it solo, and I also did a multiplayer game, because you could still play four players, local or online. Okay. uh, It is a fucking blast. It has all the same mechanics of Happy Wars. It has the same power-ups, the same different classes that you could get, and it just it boils it down to a, a single-player adventure through dungeons, through just exploration. Uh, it's all mission-based, so you'll have, like, eight different stages that you go through, and then you do a new mission, and it's, it's just it's fucking fun. This is what I wanted with Happy Wars. Well, that's, like, I, I that's wanted to good. enjoy a game. Like, I it really enjoyed Happy Wars. I just hated how I had to rely on trying to get matched up in a game with a ton of other people. And now you know, I'm over that at this point. Now I can just play Happy Dungeons to my heart's content and have fun. Cool. <laughs> uh, the first time I played with someone online... They did not have access to a Founders Pack, and they didn't pick up any Happy Jewels. When I got my Happy Jewels, the first thing I did in the store was there was, like, a Veterans Pack, which has, you know, a a significantly more powerful weapon and armor set. Mm-hmm. And it kind of turned the game into easy mode for a bit. Like I Was, was just, it just, like, for the level that you were at? It, it was because I was basically starting the game in the first level with super overpowered stuff. Ah. Well, so I, w- I was just cruising through. As I, as you get further into the game, obviously the enemies get more powerful. Uh, my armor is still good enough that they're not really touching me still, but it's, it takes me longer to take them out. Makes sense. There are four different difficulties in the game from human all the way up to insane. And they are not fucking around when they say insane. Like, they recommend uh, level 50 for insane difficulty. There were people that, uh, like the prologue in insane difficulty, the prologue, there's a, a special character which, if you die, resurrects you. So you cannot lose the prologue unless the timer runs out, which you have an hour to complete the prologue. There are people who have not beat the prologue because they ran out of time. Wow. And normally you could beat the prologue in like five minutes. (laughs) Interesting. (laughs) So the game at the higher difficulties is not fucking around (laughs) at all. I can get behind that. Uh, The more people that you play with, obviously, the more enemies are going to pop up. You could get better armor and weapons. You can uh, power up your your weapons and armor by sacrificing items to put into them. 
and level them up to, I, I think the stuff I have is like a max level of 70, but normal stuff will have 30 to 50. Uh, you can eventually earn minions that are just kind of like offline helpers that'll just follow you around and you could get an army of minions eventually in the game. There's, there's just a lot to do. And the fact that it's free, like you don't need to spend a penny to enjoy this game. You can, if you want to get like shortcuts with the, the weapons pack or whatever else. Yeah. Like, I mean, if you, I, I don't mind if the, if it's implemented properly, I don't mind microtransactions in games. Like, if you want to play the game, if, it, if they have it set up where you could technically play through uh, the majority of the content and not having to pay a dime, that's kind of cool. If you enjoy the game, you should be, you know, giving them a little bit of a kickback. Yeah. And the, the thing I like about this is unlike Happy Wars, where you could spend money and get more powerful equipment in a multiplayer versus game, in this, it's a single player or just a PVE experience, so right. it's not going to ruin anybody else's experience. No. Unless you get grouped up with plebs, and then they're just like, I can't hit anything. <laughs> and then you just wreck everything for them, so whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I can't really say buy it, because it's a free game, but download it. Get it? Play it. <laughs> Try it. Just just play the game. It's a free to play game. If if you enjoy it as much as I do, drop a couple bucks on Happy Jewels and get yourself some cool armor or weapons, or at least get some customization stuff. Like they have extra haircuts and hair colors and faces. Cool. Like if you've played Happy Wars, you know how ridiculous some of the character faces can be. Yeah, and they have some really ridiculous ones oh, in the good. in the the customizable store that you could spend happy jewels on. So yeah, definitely highly recommended game. This is what I've wanted out of a happy title. So I'm a happy title. Yes. I'm, I'm thrilled that happy dungeons is here and massive props to toy logic for giving me the game I've wanted from them. <laughs> <laughs> it took you long enough. No, it's, all right, next game is called Cannon Brawl, developed by Turtle Sandbox, published by Blitworks. It released August 5th for $14.99. This is kind of like a tower defense on a 2D plane with worm-style gameplay. Okay. So it's imagine imagine the gameplay of worms, but the main goal is you are a castle and you have to destroy the opponent's castle. And you have, like, a, a blue bubble around you, which is your territory that you can put your equipment in. You can you can set down, like, hot air balloons that will expand your territory. And you want to try getting further along so you could place cannons closer to the enemy to blow them up. Or oh, this is... It's literally, like, RTS worms. It, this it is really fucking is. nuts, man. This yeah. is crazy. There, there are, you know, obviously when you start off, there's going to be like mines that you have to set down and mine them to get currency. You can upgrade your cannons. So the more you upgrade them, the farther they can shoot and the more powerful their weapons are. Uh, they have shields that you could put up that you could strengthen so that like a, a full powered shield could take a full powered missile blast completely and, and save everything behind it. Uh, your ship Every, everything that you uh, upgrade or control in the game, you have to run your airship to. So if your shield goes down and the cooldown is over, you have to fly over to the shield and reposition it and reactivate it. If your cannon fired, it has a cooldown so you could go off to something else. When that cooldown is up, you got to go back to that cannon, aim it, and shoot it. So it's a very hands-on game. Unlike a tower defense, it's more more manually operated. So okay. there's there's a lot of multitasking there, but holy shit, the game is fun. It has a full-on campaign mode, gigantic campaign mode, plus it has online battles. Okay. So, so it, you can kind of like, even if you don't have a ton of people to play with, you can just play against other people, so that's... Yeah. Now keep in mind that your, your online play uh, is is 
fairly tied to how well you are. So, like, if, if people have been playing it a lot more than you and have a lot more shit unlocked, you are going to get wrecked. Well, you have to think of it just like any other RTS. Think of it like StarCraft. If you're playing against really good StarCraft players, then you're fucked. If you play against really bad StarCraft StarCraft players, it's probably really fun. But it also ties to the fact that the more you play, the more you have unlocked, like, more powerful upgrades and more powerful uh, cannons and turrets and everything else. So if you get wrecked a couple of games at the start, stick with it, unlock more equipment, and you'll you'll be nice and powerful as it goes. They have uh, mini missions that you can do, like collect so many stars or destroy so many buildings that you earn like an in-game pseudo currency for. You also earn that currency in online battles, and you can use that currency to buy a handful of uh, specially special, not, not super powered, but just different kinds of, uh, turrets or I, I can't even think of the word like units that you could place buildings. Like instead of a mine, it has a more powerful one where it also heals nearby stations. Or there okay. are also a handful of different different uh, airship captains that you could use because each airship captain has its own special perk like the, yeah. the main one so in kinda, the game kind of like almost like the the CO powers of uh of advanced wars yeah okay like the the starting airship captain has a reduction to cooldowns for all your stuff one of them like you can every so many seconds you could go to one of your buildings and heal it one okay. of them you can like go to an enemy's building and freeze it so each each okay. airship captain has its own special ability and you can use that in-game pseudo currency to unlock extra uh, buildings and extra airship captains each with their own special little bonuses for 15 bucks the fact that it has a full campaign as well as online it's not just a local multiplayer thing i gotta give this one a buy it because it's a blast yeah, ha, dude, this looks cannons. Uh, God damn it. Um, no, it looks cool. It looks really, really neat. It's I don't know how good I would be at it, um, but I'm absolutely like it seems interesting. Yeah, because it, it, it's it's kind of almost like if you were to take Advance Wars and mix it with, with Worms. Yeah, I wasn't that wasn't really too sure what I was memes. getting into when I first played it, and as soon as it clicked for me, I'm like, oh my god, this is awesome. Yeah, 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 and there I can't really think of any other games that hit that style of gameplay, so and it's very fast paced. Like this isn't like Worms oh, yeah, that where looks you have really fast turn based and you know, you have a minute to do your move. Like this is no, all it's RTS. real time. Yeah, it's an RTS. So yeah, don't I, forget don't, don't don't get it twisted. It's not worms with RTS like stuff. It's an RTS with worms like stuff. Yeah, RTS with worm style gameplay. Yes. Yeah, it's not it's way cool around. as hell. It is cool as hell for sure. Yeah, it looks awesome. Uh next one to talk about is called Slain Back from Hell. Uh this one is developed by Andrew Gilmore, published by our friends at Digerati Distribution. It released uh, back in March to fairly negative reviews. I know when Nick of Digerati was on our show talking with us, he he addressed the negative uh, the negative reviews and the negative reception of the game, saying that it was kind of rushed out before it was ready, but it's been delayed so many times that they just wanted to. They should have released it into early access, but they didn't. Okay, but now it is upgraded it is fixed and this is the game that it was supposed to be if you already bought slain you you get this for free as oh. well as a second copy to gift to someone oh yeah so remember when i gave you a copy of the game yes and you got a second copy to gift to someone i was wondering i was wondering what the hell was going on there cuz i didn't know it was like wait did it just add the code to my inventory and i just no, have it, to claim it now it or gives, it gives you a second copy to give to a friend which i think is cool as fuck on their part to be like hey we fucked up let us fix Sar- it and let sorry. us prove how good the game is 
Uh, if you yeah, haven't picked cool. it up before, it is it released August 1st. It is re-released August 1st for twelve ninety nine. Uh We had C.J. Greenwood give us some written impressions of this one. So would you like to handle that one, Chris? I would. Uh, let me make sure before this, I, I, I'm pulling up Steam right now to make sure that I have it installed because I'm actually probably going to try this when we're done recording. <laughs> um, well, cause I, I just haven't had, I just haven't had a shit ton of time. So, and I've been wanting to play some of the stuff that we've been getting sent. So, um, I want to make sure that it's not going to pop up in front of this review when I go to read it, which is actively what it's trying to do right now. Go away, Steam. <laughs> I fucking figured this is what was going on. All right. Here we go. All right. Anyway. Um, Slain is a 2D action platformer similar to Castlevania that is difficult as hell. Um, the first thing I'd like to talk about is my favorite part of the game, the soundtrack. There are a lot of games that I play while listening to podcasts or music, but in this case, I didn't want to because I wanted to be able to hear the incredible soundtrack. It's all metal. And my only problem is that the music cuts when you enter a new area and have the, dis- the uh, and have the dis- description of the area. It feels weird and pulls me out of the moment. With that being said, I always felt r- ready and pumped to take on the next group of enemies. Uh, Gameplay-wise, it's pretty simple initially, but it gets complex when you find new enemy types. Uh, first, you have your standard small enemies that really aren't a problem, uh, and they're just in the way which are a little different depending on the stage that you are in. Uh, but more often than not, it will be stuff like skeletons. Um, then you have skeletons that can shoot magic at you, which for some reason I still have a hard time with, especially when dealing with other, other enemies on top of them. Uh, then you have your large enemies that can uh, be different and stage-based. They all seem to have different strategies to them, which makes each stage a little different rather than cutting through the same enemies over and over and over again. Uh, the easiest one of the big guys so far has to be the large wolfmen because of how slow they are. You can back up a bit and strong attack them, uh, repeat that three times, and then they're gone. Uh, s- speaking of... It, it said... Uh, before that, it said hold X on the controller to do the strong attack. Um, speaking of controllers, the controls are very well done. Um, it takes a little bit getting used to, uh, though, as the game does not, it does have some odd things about it. For example, when you press left bumper, you dash backwards, but I found myself always trying to push the analog stick in the direction I want to dash, meaning that I actually dash in the other direction often towards enemies because it's a dash backwards. Yeah, that that's um, straight out of Symphony of the Night. The, that has a back dash in the game. So that's it's like get in, attack and then back dash. So that's why there's a back dash in the game. Makes sense. Um it also took a bit of getting used to uh with pressing Y to block. I think it would be easier with left trigger and I believe you can change the controller button mapping in game as well, but I never tried. Well, then you should probably try. Um <laughs> <laughs> at the at the end Fucking of every nerd. stage, uh, at the end at the end of every stage, there's a boss. Uh, all the bosses are pretty v- difficult, and each have their own attack pattern that you need to learn. Uh, I remember specifically thinking the Banshee Queen was annoying, and it was stupid. Uh, that should all right. Hold on, let me try this again. Um, thinking that the Banshee Queen was annoying, and it was stupid. That should ha- could one hit kill. With her wall. <laughs> she could one hit kill? Is that whale? No, it, says, it says should. I'm, th- I'm thinking he meant to I say, say she could one hit kill yeah. you with her whale. With her whale. Maybe tail. I'm not sure. Um, however, An once you... whale from the ocean, from Abzu. It's a cross promotion. <laughs> it's cross promotion. <laughs> Sperm whale. Yeah. Uh, however, however, once you learn her, you discover that the whale is incredibly easy to avoid and she is actually one of the easiest bosses in the game to the point i got to she was the last boss that i faced another moment i particularly liked was the wolf stage where you first meet the wolf king drawing a blank on the name uh and he turns you into a wolf then chases you through half the stage um pretty it's pretty early on in the game uh 
This game is one of those games you could pick up and play only if you have 20 or 30 minutes before you have to go do something else because of how nice the checkpoint system is. Once you hit a checkpoint, you can quit out, and when you launch the game up again and resume, you'll be at that checkpoint. This is also very useful if you're like me and get very angry easily and decide you need to take a break. <laughs> and come back later, which is very helpful in this game as I found myself coming back and beating stuff within a few tries that I was failing 20 to 30 times before. <laughs> um, this game isn't actually that hard. It's more of learning what enemies do and how to approach them. Uh, if you learn all of that, you can beat this game in a respectable amount of time. Speaking of which, I think this game would make an excellent speed run opportunity. Um, overall, I didn't have any... Uh, experience with the game prior to the major fix so i don't know how much it was improved but from what i've heard it's a much better experience and the devs really excuse me it's really seem to care about their game i really enjoyed it and for the price of 12.99 it's a no-brainer buy it nice yeah i've i've put a handful of time into the game myself and it is it's one of those games that when you first play it it could be brutally difficult but it is one of those things where you just need to learn the stage, learn the pattern, and you can speed run through it. A lot of the the achievements in the game uh, are fucking brutal. <laughs> okay. It's like, defeat the Banshee Queen without losing any health. Cool. Defeat the Thorn Beast without losing any health. Defeat Lupus cool. Rex without losing any health. <laughs> Yeah, I see, like, I'm cool with that. I'm finish with that. finish this stage without dying at all. Finish this stage without dying at all. It's, there's a lot of stuff where at first you're like, oh my god, this is never going to happen. But once you learn the stage and learn how the game works, you can you could probably get it down and do it. Like he said, this is going to be a game that I think speedrunners are going to have a fun time with. Well, that's cool. Defeat the game without losing a single life. You know what? Fuck you. <laughs> you know what? Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, I, I also like uh, how how bloody and gory the game is in pixel style graphics. It just it's like a super gory Castlevania, and it, it works. I'm, well. I'm really I'm really pumped to to get my hands on it myself and really sit down and give it a shot. So. And then he mentioned the soundtrack. The soundtrack was recorded by Kurt Victor Bryant of Celtic Frost, formerly of Celtic Frost. What? Yo, that's that's fucking awesome. Yeah. And if you get the deluxe edition of the game on Steam, it comes with the soundtrack. Fucking Celtic Frost. That's no joke, man. Like, that's that's a big band. Yeah. That's really funny. And that's, uh, that's, that's cool. Might as well spoil it. That's what I'm going to be playing this episode. <laughs> cool. Because I, awesome. I dropped I dropped the, the couple bucks for the deluxe upgrade that has the soundtrack. The soundtrack seems to be cut weird for like the, the, the digital deluxe release where like some of the songs have like just 30, 40 seconds of dead air at the end of a song. Like it. Oh, that's uh, weird. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure how they, they cut and edited the songs, but some of them have, like, weird abrupt endings. Some of them just have, like, empty space at the end of the track. I think they're all wave format, so... Uh, I, well, that's probably just for quality. Yeah. I know it is available, I believe, on uh, iTunes, so that might have, like, a a properly mastered and cut release. I, I don't know. I, yeah, I don't know. It's fucking awesome music, that's for sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to check it out, man. That's yeah. it's, it's fucking Celtic Frost. That's so sweet, man. <laughs> that's so cool. <laughs> yeah, uh, next game to chat about is called Kingdom New Lands. This is developed by Noyo and Licorice, published by Raw Fury, released August 9th for $14.99. This is, like, a lot of people are comparing this to the Deer God which visually it looks like the Deer God, which was like an uh, an earlier Games with Gold on Xbox. Yeah, yeah. That I ha- game I have... is just like run right forever, which... Yeah. It might look like that game, but it is, it is incredibly different. In this one, you are a, a king 
that washed ashore on an island. So it's just you and your horse, you're shipwrecked and you're on this island and you have to, uh, kind of like rebuild a, like a base of operations, like a little camp, recruit people, fortify your settlement, uh, improve your settlement and eventually repair a boat and sail the fuck off the island because and there sail are the tiny fuck off the island. because there are little evil monsters that every night attack your settlement every night and it all comes down to what night you are in the game like the the first night in the game you'll get attacked by one dude the second night okay. in the game you'll get attacked by two dudes the third night three dudes and it increases where you know obviously by night 20, there's not going to be 20 guys, but there's going to be like six of them, but they're more powerful. Okay. So after so many guys, they, they just start getting more and more powerful. And you have to make sure that you can properly, uh, you know, defend your settlement, have enough people to, to guard and repair. And it all comes down to, uh, the people that you recruit, you have to pay them a gold coin. To start off, you'll find, like, some treasure chests on the island that have gold coins in them. And from there, you have to have people, like, if you kill an animal, if one of your archers kills a rabbit, they'll drop a gold coin. If one of your builders cuts down a tree, you'll get a gold coin, possibly two. And you have to use those gold coins to improve your settlement, improve the different buildings... Uh, again, you pay one to recruit someone to your, to your settlement. If they, if anyone ever gets defeated by one of the monsters in the game, they don't die. They just become homeless again. And you have to, okay. you have to rehire them. So it costs okay. another gold coin to rehire them. Uh, oh, and then they, they lose their weapon, which, you know, either their weapon or their axe or whatever, where you have to rebuild a new weapon for two or three coins. So losing people could get expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you pay money to upgrade the town. You can pay money to build walls to the building, to the settlement. Uh, you could pay money to build guard towers, to improve the guard towers, improve the walls, everything else. Uh, so it's kind of like a settlement builder. On a 2D plane, mixed with tower defense, mixed with a sim. <laughs> uh, okay. It's it's That's a really kind of cool premise. It's a lot of fun. I it's one of those games where I sat down to like give it a ten minute little trial thing, and yeah. then two hours later I was on the third island and I'm like I can't stop playing this. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's a lot of fun. I had a blast with it. I'm hoping to set up an interview with some of the guys from Raw Fury, uh, either possibly later this month or whenever whenever they have time. One of the guys in Raw Fury is actually a former editor from Destructoid. Oh, Hamza that's Aziz. Cool. I partied with him at Magfest a few times, and when I emailed them, I just got a random email back from him, who's just like, "Hey, Joe, how you doing?" <laughs> uh. That's funny. So I'm like, oh my god, you work at you work at this company. So we got to get you guys on. So hopefully, hopefully we'll get them on to talk about the game. I know, I believe today they're doing an AMA on Reddit, which today being Wednesday, not Friday, the day that you're listening to this. Yeah. So you missed you know, it already, but it, yeah, it, it, it happened. It was great. It was an amazing AMA. <laughs> the best AMA. It was amazing. It was incredible. The Second Amendment people are gonna love that AMA. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. Uh, 15, I'm not happy with it, but I get it. <laughs> Fifteen bucks. It's it's a very niche title, so a lot of people might not really get into it. But if you were into settlement builders and mixed with kind of like a tower defense style game, you're gonna love this game. Everyone else, I'd say, give it a try. It. Okay. But but if you if you like what's there, you are going to lose a lot of time into this game. And I love the achievements in the game as well. They have a lot of unique achievements. Uh, there's, you know, the usual stuff of like survive to day five, 10, 15, 20, up to day 100. They okay. have achievements for I got to 20 before I bailed on the one island. And then they have a handful of stuff that's like 
on the first day, like how it's like on the first day, God created this kind kind of weird stuff like that. Let me, let me pull up the list here just so I have good examples. It's like on the first day you recruited eight archers. So it's like get eight archers within the first day on the second day, you got free walls. So building walls on the, on the second day, the third day you started your camp. So you have to wait until day three to build your camp. By the fourth oh. day, you hunted 20 or more deer for five days. You didn't kill anything. Oh, so that's it's interesting. Like basically just build walls and hope they don't get through them without killing anything. Uh, uh the sixth day you had more gold than you can carry because your, your money in the game, you keep it in a, in a, like a little pouch. And if it gets too full, the coins, you know, they might just settle weird or they could fall out of your pouch onto the ground <laughs> or they could even <laughs> fall into the river and you lose it completely. Oh, that's hysterical. Yeah. By, by the seventh day, you cleared an acre of land. So just cutting down a shit ton of trees. Okay. Uh, until the eighth day, you never drop the coin on the ground. And you have to drop a coin to hire people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Until the ninth day, you never galloped. So you just, in, you're always on your horse in this game. So you just walked slowly the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> that's really funny. This is good. That's, that's clever. I yeah. like that. I like that. And and then there's stuff like beat and build the boat and escape the first island before day 10, the second one by day 15, stuff like that. It's it's just it's a cool cool game and it's really deep. There's a lot to it. So, yeah, try it. Good stuff. Sounds fun. Uh final game to talk about. This one's all you, Sentinels of the Multiverse, developed by Handelabra Games, published by Handelabra Games and Greater Than Games. It is available on Steam for $9.99 with various DLC and a season pass for $24.99. It is available on iOS and Android for $2.99 and the season pass is $17.99. A second season of the game was funded on Kickstarter back in April and will be coming soon. Okay, so... Right now, like I said before, um, this is the this is the game that I'm just going to give first impressions on for right yeah, now because I do want to put some more time into it. Not this a isn't review. the full review, um, but my initial like my initial uh, thoughts on it so far. Um, if you're familiar with any of the tabletop deck building games like Ascension or, uh, namely, there's two that I really want to bring up. There's uh, the DC deck building game which if you're familiar with the dc comic universe um you know it's basically their it's it's their deck building game so basically you have a bunch of cards you're creating your deck as you go you pick a hero your hero has certain abilities you're fighting um villains that are essentially like in the middle row it's 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 extremely similar to ascension if you've ever played ascension um it's standard deck building game experience um, the Marvel deck building game, um, the Marvel deck building game is what I feel is closer to what this is. I think it's technically called legendary. Um, I played it once or twice at the local game shop that I used to go down to when I lived by you, Joe. Um, and the way that this game plays out, it is a lot more similar to Legendary, whereas the like the mastermind of what Legendary was is the the villain of this game. Um, w instead of everybody at the table trying to just build the most baller ass deck and get the most points, um, you have to think of it more as this is like a co op like us against the game game so it sounds kind of like two-headed giant from magic the gathering something like that it's it's more along the lines of um god i really want to just fucking look this name up i think it's like arc arc hmm, archmage maybe i don't even maybe. remember it i don't fucking i i don't know i don't know i don't fucking blah, blah, blah. show i don't know um but blah, blah, blah. I would say I would say it is very similar. I think there's an actual like tabletop version of this game 
and I think this is just the digitalized version of it so that you don't have to worry about like fucking distributing cards and cleaning all the shit up afterwards. Um, and then a lot, I think a lot of the pricing comes down to like expansions and more cards and all that kind of stuff. Um, the reason why I don't want to like absolutely 100% go through with a review is because I'm curious to see like how the DLC works a little bit more. And I want to have an opportunity to sit and maybe like if, if you said that you have a copy of it on uh, Steam. I have that- uh, the iOS version, which I it's have iOS. not fired up yet. Okay. Oh, is it cross? Do we f- do we know if it's I was cross- I was told it's cross play. Okay. Well, I would when we go to do the full like the full blown review. I want to try and get in a multiplayer game just to see if this is exactly like if the multiplayer's ex- experience is going to be similar to how it was when I was playing Legendary. Yeah. Um. If so, I could absolutely see myself if I had the right people. Um, I could absolutely see myself like dumping a shit ton of time into this game. Um, but I think it absolutely depends on who you play it with because games like, because games like this, you can kind of burn yourself out on them. Um, depending on like, you know, your, your play style and, and you know, what types of games you do enjoy. Um, games like Ascension and the and DC Deck Builder and all that kind of stuff, I can sit and play over and over and over and over again as long as you have, like, a good group of people that you can just kind of bullshit with. Yeah. Because um, it's more about, like, the social aspect of it because you're, again, with Legendary and with this game, everybody's working towards a common goal. So it's not like, oh, I won this game and you won that game. It's, no, did we win or did we lose? Like... <laughs> hmm. Um, so that alone is kind of like it, it's more interesting to me because I just I enjoy co-op experiences a lot more than PvP. Um, so that's that's something to consider if you're just looking for something uh, to play with other people and just have some fun with. But if you're into deck building games, like it's th- it's three dollars on mobile to get started. Yeah, uh, mobile iOS, all that kind of stuff. So if you have a tablet, um, whatnot, it's a little bit more expensive on PC. Uh, but there's more stuff, right? You do, yeah. It's like some of the DLC and stuff is included into it. Um, so I'll, I'll go a little bit more in depth when I have some more time with it. But as of right now, my first impressions are it seems pretty much like Legendary. So if you've played Legendary, it's like that. Which I have not, so I can't compare it. Well, for those of <laughs> you that are listening at home or in or in your car or in the shower... If you're listening to us in the shower, hey, ladies. <laughs> hey, lady. You, use, use that shower Once head the right, right way while you're in the shower listening to us. Ladies. I, uh, I, I lost all of my sexual appetite for the next month. <laughs> nice. Mission accomplished. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, those are my first impressions so far. I don't want to go like too much into it, but so that's cool. something else that we could uh, revisit further down the line, possibly next week, the week after, if we have time to to get something set up. Uh, I know that's that's one that I was chatting with the PR lady and possible to set up an interview with us. So if I if something does get set up there, it would definitely have to be on a show with you. Oh yeah, yeah, because I, I I I recognize that I'm gonna have more of the uh experience with this type of game yeah you're you're the card guy you're the card game guy the card game guy (laughs) card game guy is cgg instead of ccg tcgg you're you're the ccgg i'm the tcgg (laughs) i'm the trading card game guy trading collectible card game guy tccgg tccgg yeah yes just like sml (laughs) <laughs> i get it i get it uh all right well that's everything we got to cover i'm not sure if there's anything else you wanted to talk about no i think i hit everything that i wanted to nice so what are you playing <laughs> uh i haven't really been playing much i played some diablo new season came out so um I'm just kind of like gearing up my guy. I did did some streaming. I th- I have my stream set up now, so um in my spare time I'm going to start doing that. Um 
some Overwatch just because uh, I, I mentioned it last week. They did like the whole like Olympic game ish kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and and the the brawl is Lucio Ball, which is essentially like Rocket League with a bunch of Lucios. <laughs> um, so I've been playing that like every once in a while. I actually playing that caused me to want to play Rocket League again. So I've been playing some Rocket League here and there. <laughs> um, I was playing. Uh, I finally got my rank in uh, solo duels. Um, I I don't I don't know my actual rank right now, but I I, pl- I finished all my placement matches. I only lost one. Um, Good job, proud of you. Yeah. So uh, just playing some Rocket League. There was some new Rocket League stuff that was announced recently. Um, so I'm just kind of like getting. Uh, reaccustomed to the game so that I could mess around with it. I don't know. Did we talk about that last week? I don't think so. The new Rocket League stuff? Well, if you don't know about the new Rocket League stuff, um, I don't even... God, I'm going to have to Google it because I don't remember what the fuck they called it. <laughs> um, It's fucking weird, though. Rocket League Rumble, I think that's it. Yeah. So, Rocket League Rumble adds grappling hooks, freeze rays... Oh, um, God. No, I don't think I heard about this stuff. Yeah, so it's kind of almost like if you were to take Rocket League and add in, like, fucking Vigilante 8 shit. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> like it's, I'm, I'm really pumped for this. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, there's a boot, so you can kick an opponent's car. There's a disruptor that forces the opponent to drive uncontrollably. There's a freezer that freezes the ball in place. There's a grappling hook that pulls you towards the ball. Uh, A haymaker that punches the ball. A magnetizer that attracts the ball to your car. A plunger that grabs the ball be a plunger and a cord. Uh, (laughs) A power hitter that hits everything harder. A spike that uh, attach the ball to your car when you bump into it. Um... A swapper that changes positions on the field with your opponent, which that's fucking hilarious. Um, and a tornado to sweep the ball up and cars into a giant funnel. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> so, yeah, there's just there's 11 power ups that you could potentially get, and it's going to be crazy. So, I don't know. I, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be free to download next month. Nice. That, that's, um, that's what I love about Rocket League is they have just been putting out all this extra free content. Yeah, I mean, it's going to have um, uh, there's going to be one new extra game mode. The DLC pack will have more as of yet unknown content. Um, but uh, it says it's available as a free download sometime next month. Um, but right now, Psyonix is not saying exactly when. Yeah, but it's coming. Hey, bring, fucking bring them on. Every time they release a new car for like two or three bucks for all the free shit they've given us, I'm like, yeah, I'll give them three bucks for a car. Yeah, I've, I've gotten a, f- a few of the uh, the deals. I've bought all the DLC, I think, twice. I think the only <laughs> DLC I didn't grab was like the NBA flags because I just don't care. Yeah, I didn't get those either. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that was more of just like a cross-promotional yeah. thing. Yeah. Whatever. I mean, even that was two bucks for a bunch of flags for your car. Yeah, which, dude, fucking fuck it. It's yeah. two bucks. So, Whatever. yeah, Rocket League, Diablo, <laughs> Overwatch, Hearthstone, um, THQ went bankrupt. Something I don't like think that. there's really anything else that I've been playing off the top of my head that I can remember. Well, then you know what it's time to play? What is the time to play? Some music from Slain. What do you think? Oh shit! I'm gonna. I'm actually gonna play that at some point later. Dude, today, it's hopefully. it's so cool, and I'm I'm excited because it is supposed to hit consoles. Clearly, the the console plans got delayed when the game kind of released to to disaster levels. But I I hoping it's back on track, and maybe we'll see it later this year. I was I was hoping uh, Nick from Digerati was going to be able to make this episode, but uh. He he had to back out, and then the replacement interview also never heard back from. So we had two interviews fall apart for today's episode alone. <laughs> wow. 
Uh, yeah. Actually, fun it, facts it, behind the scenes of the SML podcast. As soon as I as soon as I actually opened up my Facebook, um, there's a trending thing for Overwatch. Just a little bit of news um, that people figured out, like that Lucio Ball thing that I was talking about, where it's essentially just a bunch of players as Lucio playing Rocket League. Yeah. Um, some players figured out how to switch the characters so you could use somebody other than Lucio. <laughs> Yeah, doesn't that, like, fuck things up really bad? Yeah, well, apparently it's an exploit, and Blizzard put a, released a statement saying that um, people that use the exploit could potentially be punished. Yeah, I know they put out a statement being like, yeah, don't do that. Yeah, don't do that. Don't. don't. <laughs> no. no. But don't, don't do that. Don't do that. No. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> oh, man, good stuff. Good stuff. So, uh... Final words before we rock out to some motherfucking slain music. And anything final words? Uh, uh, I should probably think of these in advance, right? (laughs) 